It was 1995 when Baba Ramdev along with Acharya Balakrishna started a small sized Ayurvedic pharmacy at Haridwar named Dibbe Pharmacy. In the initial days they used to distribute the medicines for free. From procuring the raw materials to the preparation of the medicines everything used to be done by the duo themselves. They didn't even have the money to register Dibbe Pharmacy. And guys the most interesting part is with such humble beginnings this duo went on to become the founder of one of the prominent FMCG brands in India which even clocked a revenue of around 10000 crore rupees in the year 2016-17 but how did that happen so ladies and gentlemen this dates back to the early 2000s when baba ramdev's popularity was slowly growing and things changed completely when he got a chance to start a yoga program with a popular television channel named aastha and in no time baba ramdev became a household name and his popularity grew immensely And in around 2006 the duo Acharya Balakrishna and Baba Ramdev started Patanjali Ayurved. But despite the presence of some prominent century old Ayurvedic and Unani brands like Badenath and Hamdard how come Patanjali Ayurved became such a success? And in less than a decade of its launch Patanjali clocked a revenue of whooping 10000 crore rupees. But guys the shocking thing is after this point Patanjali only saw its downfall and couldn't even cross the 10000 mark again. And at this juncture the question is how come such a promising brand degraded and failed to grow and guys what even more interesting is recently baba ramdev claimed that in the next 5 years that is by 2027 patanjali would become the number one fmcg brand in india so by this can we expect that patanjali had made a comeback from its past failures and is all set to disrupt the fmcg market again well let's decode all of these in this exclusive episode on patanjali's rise fall and comeback Guys this is going to be one of the finest case studies with lots of insightful business lessons on how you can defeat your competition like the way Patanjali did and what mistakes you shouldn't do to avoid the failures like Patanjali and if you are an entrepreneur or aspires to be one this video is going to be very insightful for you watch it till the end So to start with let's first understand that despite the presence of brands like Badenath Hamdard how come Patanjali Ayurved became such a success Well the credit goes to the clever positioning and value innovation of Patanjali. The brands like Badenath and Hamdard are Ayurvedic and Unani pharma companies who manufacture medicines. Though Divya Pharmacy is a Ayurvedic pharma company but Patanjali Ayurved is an FMCG company which uses the goodness of Ayurveda to manufacture day to day FMCG products like toothpaste, shampoo, soaps etc. So they are entirely different from Badenath or Hamdard. But also this should be noted that FMCG is one of the biggest sectors in India with the presence of behemoths like Hindustan Unilever, Nestle, ITC, Dabur, etc. And of course it is not at all easy to compete with them. So how did Patanjali manage to get through? One answer, value innovation. Here at this point Patanjali killed both the birds with one stone called value innovation. Confusing, right? Don't worry, let's get deeper into it. So guys, what is value innovation? It's made up of two words, value and innovation. Here the value means the benefit which the customer get for their money while innovation means the uniqueness and originality of that benefit and guys this is a secret recipe to grow a brand or business in a hyper competitive segment it is called value innovation because instead of focusing on beating the competition one can focus on making the competition irrelevant by creating a leap in the value for buyers and their company thereby opening up all together a new and uncontested market space and guys this is what patanjali did Instead of getting into a cutthroat competition with the existing Ayurvedic medicine brands, Patanjali tweaked the concept a little and mixed Ayurveda with FMCG, which not just helped them escape the competition from the existing Ayurvedic medicines brand, but also opened up an entirely new and bigger market, that is FMCG. And at that time, the existing FMCG brands were more or less producing the same type of products, but Patanjali's innovative mix of Ayurveda and technology had a potential to create a greater value. Moreover the price of the Patanjali's products were way cheaper than the FMCG companies thus from a product perspective Patanjali was all set to disrupt the market but how would the consumer know that your brand offers such value with such innovative products yes marketing marketing was indeed very important especially for a new player like Patanjali the consumer must know the value which the brand is providing and mostly doing business without marketing and advertisement is just like winking at a girl in the dark you know what you are doing but nobody else does so guys on the marketing front here comes baba ramdev by that time baba ramdev has become synonymous with yoga and healthy living and he became the brand ambassador of patanjali his followers had a huge trust in him thus association of patanjali with baba ramdev gave people a perception of swadeshi organic healthy and pure products from the brand 
and indeed the impact Baba Ramdev has created, no Bollywood celebrity or cricketer could ever create. As a result of all these, Patanjali grew at almost 100% CAGR continuously for 4 years in a row. And in fiscal year 2017, their revenue touched almost 10,000 crore rupees, which made Patanjali the top 3 FMCG brands in India. Then suddenly what happened after fiscal year 2017 that Patanjali's growth became quite stagnant and started declining in the coming years. One major reason for this is failure to scale. Guys, scaling up a business is every entrepreneur's dream, but often it becomes a nightmare as well. Hyper growth is terrifying and it's most often the success which kills a great company. The same happened with Patanjali as well. This might sound quite ironic, but Patanjali's hyper growth was the reason for its failure. Actually, Patanjali's back-end technology and strategic decisions could not pace up with the hyper-growth of their brand. Guys, to scale up any new business, there are four things which has to be done right. First, right people. Second, right strategy. Third, right execution. And fourth, right finances. And Patanjali stumbled badly in most of them. To understand it better, let's first understand the brand architecture of Patanjali. But before that, what exactly is a brand architecture? It's mostly the structure and organization of the brands within an organizational entity. And there are majorly three types of brand architecture. First, house of brands. Second, branded house. And third, hybrid model. Now, house of brand means under one umbrella, there are plenty of independent brands. For example, Hindustan Unilever. Under Hindustan Unilever, there are several independent brands like Clinic Plus, Brew, Close Up, etc. And branded house means there are no independent brands and all the products are branded under the company's name itself. For example, Patanjali. There are no independent brands under Patanjali. All of the products are marketed under the one name that is Patanjali. And hybrid model is a mix of the above two. Now guys, a branded house architecture with Patanjali follows has its own pros and cons. This branding strategy reduces the overall marketing cost as all the products are marketed under the same brand name. But a major con is, if one of the products is not up to the mark, this hampers the reputation of the entire company. So the companies with branded house strategy have to be very careful with this. But unfortunately, this is where Patanjali made the mistake again. After achieving huge success, some of its products like Dantakanti, Keshkanti, Herbal Soaps, etc. were in very high demand. And to scale and meet the growing demand, Patanjali outsourced its production, which resulted in quality issues, ultimately hampering the overall brand name. Had Patanjali adopted the hybrid model or house of brand strategy, this might have impacted a bit lesser than it did in the branded house strategy. Another strategic failure was, Patanjali didn't keep an eye on its competitors, rather it went on entering into new industries. Hindustan Unilever launched Liver Ayus, Colgate launched Ved Sakti, and many more competitions surfaced in this segment. And instead of countering those, Patanjali launched Paridhan, its clothing arm, where there was already huge competition. Even more hilarious was Patanjali launched Kimbo. This is a messaging app to compete with WhatsApp and no doubt the results were disastrous. But the limit was when Patanjali launched its own IT company in 2020 with the name Bharua Solutions. These probably were the worst business expansion decisions of Patanjali. Meanwhile, on the executional end also, Patanjali stumbled. The demonetization and GST impacted a lot. Patanjali's technology backend was not at all ready for the GST-related inventory and invoicing management in time and failed to develop the infrastructure and supply chain around it. Also around all such chaos, the distribution channel also got damaged. There was a mismatch between the products required and the products sent, because of which some of the items were in excess while there was a shortage of some. And by the time product reaches the distributors, they are very close to the expiry date. Also, Patanjali used to do all the distributor settlements in CAS and demonetization gave a blow to this as well, which resulted in late settlements. All this damage in the supply chain and chaos also happened because of the cash burn it had to do for its absurd expansions. Also, Patanjali, being a Swadeshi company, rejected foreign investments, as a result of which the company faced financial crunch and reduced their marketing budget, which impacted the overall brand. And guys, this is more like a chain reaction. It automatically follows one after the other. But the question is, is Patanjali all set to make a comeback? Well, from what we can see now is that probably Patanjali has realized all its mistake before it's too late. It has now shifted all its focus to strengthen and restructure the supply chain and focusing on growing its existing brand rather than the new launches. Moreover, it is also trying to shift itself to a hybrid model architecture. Categories like biscuit noodles are now not included under Patanjali Ayurved and instead being classified under different group of companies. After all these restructures, Patanjali now looks in a good shape. 
But achieving the number one position in the next five years, as claimed by Baba Ramdev, still seems to be out of the question. So that's all for this episode on Patanjali. If you found the video insightful, do like the video and share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos.